Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is standard uh, or normal distribution and the standard normal curve. So uh, this is the bell-shaped curve that we've been talking about. So and then don't forget all your lessons can be found at mrmathlog.com. And then at the top, make sure you go to the link that says elementary statistics on there, okay? All right. So this is part one. We'll do this in two days right here. So this the normal distribution and the standard normal curve. Okay, so there's our standard normal curve. So so it has these properties. So the mean, median, and mode, if it's a standard normal bell-shaped curve, is all right there. So we use that funny mu symbol, that sort of M, that Greek letter mu, which sort of looks like a, a cursive M. Okay, so the normal curve is bell-shaped, and it's symmetrical about the mean. Symmetrical means that half of it's on this side and half of it's on that side, and they're the identical pictures on each side, okay? And the total area under this whole curve is 1, which represents 100%, okay? So 0 0.5 is on that side and 0 0.5 is on that side right there, okay? So then the normal curve, as it, it, it approaches uh, the x-axis right here, so it'll never cross, never, ever cross. If it crosses, it is no longer a normal curve. Okay, um, uh, it, they call it asymptotically, and asymptote is a is a is a line. In this case, it's this line right here that the graph asymptotically gets close to, but will never touch. It infinitely gets closer to. Okay, and then. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. So between uh, this is the mu, which is the mean minus one standard deviation and the mu plus one standard deviation, which is right here. Here's the mu minus one standard deviation. Here's the mu plus one standard deviation. Here, I'll, I'll get a little bit lar larger so we can see it here. So let's see. So sorry, you can't see all of that right there. So so this is one standard deviation below. This is two standard deviations below. This is the mu minus three standard deviations. Here's the mu, which is mean, plus one standard, plus two standard deviations, plus three standard deviations. That's what, that's what that means right there. Okay. All right. So uh, the graph uh, curves uh, uh, upward right here. In pre-calculus, we call it concave up. Can you see it curves upwards you, right there? Until we get to right here where the mu minus one standard deviation is, and then it cups underneath. So it's called concave down. So it curves down uh, between um, uh, one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above. It curves down. And then on each side past that, it starts curving up. Okay. So in, in pre-calculus, we call it concave up. It's concave up on this side. And then between here and here, it's concave down right there. And these, uh, where it changes concavity is called the inflection point. So the inflection points tell us where standard one standard deviation is below and above the mean right there. I'm in my classroom. There's a class next door that you can hear through the walls because there's holes in the wall and you can hear it really easily. So, all right. So a, a normal distribution can have uh, any mean uh, and any positive, positive standard deviation. So I said in my class today, the example was, let's say we had a, a bag of potato chips and it said it was... Uh, uh, 64 ounces. And I said, do you think it's exactly 64 ounces? Well, of course not. So some are a little bit more, some are a little bit less, but that, that would be the mean of 64 ounces. And so the standard deviations would tell us how much the bags vary from uh, that mean right there. Okay. So uh, both the parameters, the mu and the standard deviation gives the shape of a normal curve. So the mean gives the location and where the line of symmetry is, and the standard deviation determines how much the data is spread out. So here's three normal curves right here. Okay, so what I want you to see right here is this one has a, a mean of 3.5, and so does this one. This one has a mean of 3.5. But look how the standard deviation is 1.5 here. It's more spread out than the standard deviation, which is only 0.7 right there. Okay, <clears throat> so... Uh, so uh, uh, curve A and curve B have the same mean, but uh, and curve B and curve C have the same standard deviations, okay? But um, uh, the total area under all those curves is one right there. So and the inflection points um, uh, are one standard deviation from the means right there, okay? So, so look how how this standard deviation is larger and it spreads this out right here and this standard deviation is smaller so it's they're closed in so they're more closed in and this one has the same standard deviation so it's the same shape it's just that the mean is is shifted it shifts the whole graph to the left 
Okay, and so the inflection point is you just got to sort of guesstimate where where you think it's going from concave up to concave down, and that'll tell you where one standard deviation is. Okay, so we're going to use the figure of these normal curves to answer each. Which uh, which one has a greater mean? Okay, so the means are where the lines of symmetry are. So just go straight down. So on this one here. Half the graph is to the left and to the right, and then on this taller one here, the line of symmetry is right here. So there's the mean right there. It's 15, and the mean of this guy is 12. So since 15 is greater than 12, then curve A um, has a greater mean. Which gra uh, curve has a greater standard deviation? Which one's more spread out? Okay. Well, curve B is much more spread out than curve A is, so it's going to have a, a greater standard deviation right there. Okay. All right, so uh, use these normal curves. Um, um, it's the state test scores of New York. Uh, these are eighth graders in New York of their math test, okay? So what's the mean? So we got to uh, estimate. So just draw a line straight down to what you think the mean is right there. Okay, and it looks like, <clears throat> excuse me, it looks like these numbers are going by tens. Here's 610, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, so if we go straight down, it looks like it's going to go right in between there. So 650, 660, 670, so about 675, I would guess. So the mean is about 675. Okay, what's the standard deviation? Okay, so we got to guess. Where do you think it changes from concave up? to concave down, I don't know, maybe right about there, okay, on both sides, okay. So look for those inflection points right there and then just go straight down and that'll tell us um, uh, where the inflection points are. And so the standard deviation is this distance right here. So I'm just guesstimating that's about 640 and 710. Okay, so from 640 to 675, what's that? A difference of 35, so that would be your standard deviation. Okay, so I'm just guesstimating about 35. And, you know, you can guesstimate a little bit higher or lower than I did. You're, we're just guesstimating. We'll, we'll learn how to calculate exactly in a little bit, you guys. So in the next lesson, I think, or maybe it's the next one after that. I don't know how this textbook goes. So I taught out of an old statistics textbook from before. All right, so properties of our standard normal curve. Okay, so the area is equal to 1, okay? And our standard normal curve is going to have a mean of 0. Now, everything doesn't have a mean of 0. We could be talking about that bag of chips. Uh, another example I talked about was um, uh, the heights of all 16-year-old boys at our high school. You know, and they would have a different mean in terms of heights, whether it was inches or meters or, or whatever. Okay, or we could be talking about the length of a bark beetle. You know, that would be go under a standard normal curve. But, but to use our table in the back of the book, our table in the back of the book, um, uh, well, the area is always one right here, but our table in the back of the book has a mean of zero. Okay, and then so, um, and then... The standard deviation is 1. So here's minus 1 standard deviation, minus 2 standard deviation, minus 3 standard deviation. And then 1, 2, 3 going to the right right there, okay? And then, uh, so our empirical rule that we talked about before, 68% of the data, I guarantee that's going to be on your AP stats test if you guys are planning on taking that. Uh, falls within one one standard deviation of the mean. And the other one between two standard deviations is 95% of the data. And then it's 99.7% of the data falls within three standard deviations from the mean. Okay? So the area of the z-scores are always to the left of the number. I know what you're thinking. What are we talking about? Well, hold on. Okay, so the area increases as the z-scores decrease. All right. Okay, if I drew this line right here, let me draw... draw uh, black line right here and we'll just go right here here's the mean okay right there so 0.5 is over here 0.5 is over here because the whole area is equal to 1 right here so if we did like a z-score let's say this z-score right here we'll say that that is negative 0.5 okay well the z-score that our table is going to give us is always going to give us to the left right here okay so as our z so this would be a z-score of like a negative 0.5 and so we'd look it up on the table and it would give us this area over here Okay, so as um, uh, the z-scores increase, then the area increases because it's always given us to the left right here. This will make sense in a minute, you guys. So the area for the z-score from 0 is 0 0.5. Well, we talked about that. 
and the cumulative area is close to zero for z scores that are way over here. Because remember, it's to the left. So z of negative 3.49 is like way over here. Well, it's getting down close to zero over here. And the area to the left of a positive 3.49 right here is the almost the whole curve. So it's going to be close to one right there, okay? So here we go. So uh, we're going to use our standard normal table, okay? And in our textbooks that we have, it's a table table uh, four. I think it was table A in my old textbook. So table four in my textbook uh, is in the back of the textbook in the A pages. So pages A16 and A17. Okay, so find the cumulative area that corresponds to a z-score of 1.15. Okay, so always draw uh, a bell-shaped curve, okay, and 1.15 is to the right of zero, okay, so so we're going to look for the area, all of this area is this right here, okay, so we look up table A, so if we go to table A right here, and we go to page uh, uh, A17, and we scroll down the column down here to 1.1, so I skipped uh, 0 .0, or 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0, all the way, and then we go to 1.1. Here's 1.10, here's 1.11, so here's the 0, 01 right here. Here's the 0, 02, so this would be 1.12, 1 1.1314, here's 1.15. Okay, so this number right here, 0.8749, is the area right here that would be represented right there. So, so the area to the left of Z uh, equal 1.15 is uh, 0.8749. That just means 87.49% of the data falls below 1.15 standard deviations from the mean, okay? All right, how about this? Find the cumulative area that corresponds to a z-score of negative 0.24. So we draw that. Well, negative 0.24 is just to the left of of zero right there, okay? And remember, negative one would be like right here, so negative 0.24 is like right about there. So we look up, now remember, the z-score table always gives us the area to the left. So, so we go on page A16 and we scroll down to uh, negative 0 0.2. So page A16 gives us all the negative z-scores and page um, uh, A17 gives us all the positive z-scores. So it starts with the smallest number of negative 3.4 and then negative 3.3. So it increases, increases. So scroll down to negative 0.2 for this 0 0.2 and then we scroll over to the 4 so it starts at 0 0.987654 so here right here here is a negative 0 uh, negative 0 0.24 so it's about 0 0.4052 so that would be the area that's to the left of a z-score of a negative 0.24 okay all right so some guidelines for finding areas okay so sk always sketch the standard normal curve and shape uh, and the shape and uh, uh, and the appropriate area under the curve so if it's a z-score that's positive, then we go to the right of zero. If it's a z-score that's negative, then it's to, it's to the left of zero, okay? So to find the area to the left of your z-score, you just look for that number in the standard normal table like we just did, okay? So here's an example. So the area uh, to the left of uh, z equals 1.23. We look it up on our table right there, and that gives us this whole area right here is 0 0.8907, okay? All right, so if we want to find to the right, you guys, and what you do, so if we want to find the other side over here, since the whole curve is 1 right here, then and this side is 0 0.8907, then this side is going to be the rest of the 1. So it's 1 minus 0 0.8907. So if we want to find the area to the right, we got to take our table number uh, away from 1. Okay, so we get uh, 0 0.1093. Sometimes it'll ask you to find it between two numbers. So if you find it between two numbers, you look up. So let, let's say we want to find the area that was between uh, the z score of negative 0.75 and a z score of 1.23. Okay, you look up on the table, negative 0.75, that'll get you this area right here. You look up on the table, 1.23, and that'll get me the whole area, including this area right here to the left. So to do in between, we take the bigger number, subtract the smaller number, and that'll give us the area in between. Alrighty, alright, I hope that makes sense, and if you are in my class, that would be your assignment. Take care.